I was playing peek and I noticed this option to change the renderer. That one small toggle, it decides how the game talks to your GPU. That's called a rendering API. And in this video, we are unpacking what it really does. When a game runs, it doesn't send graphics to your GPU. It sends instructions. Draw this mesh, use this texture, light it like this, put the final pixels here. The rule book for those instructions is the rendering API. And one of the most important APIs ever made is OpenGL. OpenGL is high level and developer friendly. It hides a lot of complexity. In the earlier days, OpenGL used something called the fixed function pipeline. That meant transformations, lighting and pixel output were mostly hard coded. You didn't tell the GPU how to light a scene. You just turned lighting on or off and followed predefined rules. It was simple, it worked and it powered an entire generation of games. But it was also limited. As GPUs became more powerful, developers wanted more control. That's when OpenGL evolved into the programmable pipeline. Instead of fixed rules, developers could now write shaders, small programs that run directly on the GPU. You control vertex movement, you design lighting models, you decide how every pixel is shaded. This shift is what unlocked the modern visuals, real-time shadows, PBR materials, post-processing and cinematic effects. Even today, OpenGL still makes many decisions for you. It manages memory, it schedules work, it hides synchronization. That makes it easier to use, but not always the fastest. And that exact limitation is why newer APIs were created. In part 2, we'll see why Vulkan DirectX Metal and WebGPU exist, and how they talk to your GPU very differently.